Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. This is Anthony from Honda Snowblower Enthusiast. Uh, today I want to uh, show you something that's pretty common. You have a, a racing uh, Honda engine. Uh, by that I mean does the RPMs are, are screaming out of control and you think that the engine's going to blow up. Now I'm going to talk about that today. I had this problem earlier this week when I uh, rebuilt this engine, uh, GX200. But um, if this happens to you, normally, you know, people will uh, post it on a small engine group on Facebook or someplace, and most of the answers will come up, say, hey, the governor needs to be set. The governor needs to be adjusted. All right, well, I'm here to tell you that that's a possibility, especially if you just rebuilt the engine, you know, and the, and the uh, governor needs to be reset. And I'll show you how to do that. But most times, it's something a lot simpler. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Here's uh, the GX200 that came off of, this is on a, a, a Honda HS724 engine. And, you know, normally people will ask the question, hey, my engine's going to blow up. What, what do I do? What do I do? But they fail to tell you, you know, a lot of times some pretty important information that could give you clues. Like a lot, most times it's, it's because, uh, you know, when you ask uh, questions, oh, yeah, I just, uh, I just changed the carburetor. Or I took the fuel tank off and I... I changed the, uh, the the filter and the fuel tank, and I I changed the um, fuel line, you know, something like that. Well, that this is what I'm talking about. Normally, the problem is the linkage. Hey, you got a linkage here for your throttle, okay, and then you've got another spring here that connects to your this is your governor arm right here. It, it, it's uh, a lot of the Hondas, uh, GX engines, this is where it's at. And some of the older machines, it's, it's standing uh, vertical on the machine. But what happens is that the people will, will put the carburetor on and they'll put the linkage on wrong. Um, or you'll get, you'll get held up by something. It, they might put it underneath the fuel line or it might get snagged on something, okay? So, um, you know, you want to double and triple check your linkages. And I did with this machine. I double, triple check everything. Here's a, a tension spring for your governor arm. And what I messed up on is I put the, when I put the coil cover back on, I pinched the, I pinched the spring line behind this, uh, behind this uh, bolt hole right here, and I didn't realize it. So I put it all back together and I started it up. It started right up, but it, it was semi racing. It was around three thousand RPMs, thirty two hundred. I couldn't get it to idle. I couldn't get it down to twenty one forty, no matter what I did. And uh, uh, it was just going up to, you know, 3,200 or something all the time. You know, I was playing with the throttle. I could make it go faster, but it wouldn't go lower than the 3,000 or so. And, I, you know, with the t gas tank on, I really couldn't see this spring very well. And what happened is that this spring was snagged. It was snagged on my uh my coil cover down here so if i had posted this on on a facebook group you know a small engine group or honda snowblower enthusiasts everybody would be coming back and says hey you need to you need to uh, adjust your governor now that's that could be true if uh if you're uh you rebuilt the engine and you and you you know your governor was out of adjustment or whatever, or the governor broke. I I don't have a governor wheel to show you with the count with the the flywheel weights, but if the governor breaks inside, 
it's gonna it's gonna race on you. And uh, if the engine just screams, I mean, shut it down as fast as you can before you blow up the engine, and then start investigating. It could, in very very rare cases, I've actually not seen it in the last eight years, where where a governor has broken inside the engine. I'm sure it happens, but I've never seen it. What I've seen in 90, 95% of the cases is that the, that the owner, you know, uh, replaced the carburetor and they did not, they did not put the linkages on right. Or in most cases, the linkages are all snagged up, you know, by the fuel line or f- for some reason. So here's a is another example why I'm always saying well, take some pictures, take some pictures. You know, if 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 you're replacing the carburetor, you know, you've taken the air box, the elbow off and you've taken uh, you know, the muffler off and you've taken the top plate off. Take some pictures. Take a picture to see how everything is orientated. So you'll see, you know, where the linkage goes into, where the spring goes into here. This is your throttle. You'll see where your, your return, your tension spring for your governor arm goes, you know, in this hole or this hole. And then you find out where it goes in on this side, because I'm telling you, you know, a lot of times people are coming on these groups and say, hey, uh, where do I put where do I put the end of the spring? I don't know where to put it. I don't know where to where I don't know where to put the spring, the the spring on on here. The end, the ends. Does it go in this hole? Does this does this go in this hole, or does the spring goes in this hole? Or they don't know which which one this goes into. Okay, and say, so what's these holes for? Maybe it goes in there. So that's why, you know, I'm always telling people, and I should I should follow my own advice, you know, because sometimes I mess up, and I have to look in my Honda shop manual and see if I can find a diagram that tells me where where things go. So most of the times, that's the problem, you know. Something is is hung up. The in my case, this this spring was hung up, and this was. It was stuck almost in the wide open spot. I, you know, it was stuck, and and I wasn't getting any tension on this line. Now, if you want to know, I'll show you really quick how to adjust your governor. Or you want to make sure that the governor is adjusted right. It's really really easy. First thing you do is you put your throttle in the fast position. Why, you know, so you're so your wide open throttle, not the choke. You don't put it in the choke position. And by the way, with the elbow off, you can check to see if your choke plate's working properly. Let me show you that real quick. I showed it in another video. Let's get this uh, spark plug out of the way. So you say your choke is open right now, but when it when the engine's cold, you want to make sure that that plate's closed. So let's put it in the choke position. You see how the choke plate closes all the way? Now, if there's a little bit of right there, if it's a little bit open, the engine's going to be hard starting in the winter time. So you're going to have to adjust the choke. I got a video on that. I'll put a link at the end of this video on how to adjust your choke, okay? So this is why this is open. This is when the engine's warmed up. And this is when the engine is cold and you want it closed all the way. So let's put it back in the fast throttle. Okay. So the throttle's in fast throttle. And what you want to do, this is your your snug nut right here. I, I already loosened it. And this is this is your governor right here. This is where the governor is attached to. And I already adjusted it. Let me show you. Put the put a pair of flyers on it and turn it all the way clockwise until it stops. Now see, can you see where that is right now? Now let me get it out of adjustment. 
it doesn't really take much, see? It's only a couple hours on the clock. You know, here it is, 2 o'clock or whatever. And then when it's adjusted, you adjust it all the way clockwise, okay? And this, on this case, it's around 3 o'clock. But I can't go any further clockwise. So right there. So now it's adjusted. And, and, and uh, then I tighten it up. Let me see if I can do that with one hand. You want to snug it up. Not too tight. You don't need to you don't need to use uh Mickey Mouse strength. So I tighten it up. So now my governor is is uh adjusted. Okay? So it's pretty easy. You got to take the fuel tank off in most cases. It's a lot easier to see. I you know, I could have lifted the fuel tank up a little bit and done it underneath if I wanted to. But but I took the fuel tank off. And when I took the, I took the fuel tank off because I wanted to start, I had a problem with it racing. And I, I, what I do when I can't figure it out is I go back to square one. I start all over. I took the fuel tank off. And as I was taking the coil cover off, I noticed that the spring was stuck. It was stuck, you know, between the coil cover and and the the body of the engine. So I hope this helps you folks. If you have this racing problem, don't panic. Shut off the engine as soon as it starts screaming on you so you don't blow it up. And then start investigating what you did, whether it's replacing the carburetor or you got it back to the sh from the shop and it's doing it. And most of the times it's the linkage. Okay. Most of the time, uh, if, if, if your, if your governor broke inside the engine, it could be that, but it's extremely rare in my experience. And then if you're like me that rebuild these engines, you know, it could be that it could be that this needs to be reset. Okay, folks. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, check out the link at the end of the video on on how to uh, adjust your choke and your and your RPMs and and we'll see you next time.